Oh yeah, we got an upgrade. Welcome everyone to the new and improved Chip Tide Show. Now, to celebrate the brand's swanking new set, I thought it was only fitting that we go back to the very beginning, to the genesis of my journey into the gaming world. Now, why am I celebrating something brand new by going back and trying to relive the past, you ask? Well, well, Richard, you were supposed to warn me about these kind of things. What do you think I am paying you for? I was born right around the turn of the millennium. Most people my age were introduced to video games through the Wii, DS, Xbox 360, PS3, maybe a GameCube if you were ahead of your time, but that was not the case for me. If you would, follow me over to Studio B. Welcome everyone to Studio B. It's nice, we got some, some posters here, we got this nice desk. It's not Richard's. God knows I could never work in the same room as him. No, this is actually the desk of my new coworker, Daryl. He's not here right now, you know, he's a little busy ruling over space and time or whatever. <laughs> you know him, but that's not why we came here. We came here to look at this. This ancient, ancient artifact is the key to unlocking the beginning of my odyssey as a gamer. You see, by the time the Wii hit the shelves, I was already a seasoned gamer, trained in the fires of this thing, the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is actually the exact same console that my dad had when he was a kid. He carried it through the ages and like a holy heirloom, when me and my brother came of age, like four or five, he passed this power down onto us. This thing has survived the beating of two childhoods, the latter of which being twins. It's been busted open and operated on to fix the little pins inside. 80s kids will understand. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure if it still works, but that doesn't matter because we don't have a TV that it can even plug into anymore. But back in the heyday of the NES, 2005, man, there was nothing better. Me and my brother would spend hours bathed in the glow of the CRT TVs, getting grooves in our hands from the weird rectangular controller. Seriously, who thought this thing was a good idea? I don't Why? Some of you may look at this and see an old, outdated piece of hardware, but I look at it and see a beautiful, perfect, outdated piece of hardware. This console is home to some of the most innovative games of all time, and also a lot lot of just utter trash. But today, I'm not concerned with either of those. Today, I'm answering the question that I know you've all been asking. What is the best NES game of 2021? But before we can answer that question, we need to define what it means to be a good NES game in 2021. There are a ton of games on here that are influential and shaped entire genres for decades to come. And going back and playing them today, they are just the worst. So, to help us answer this question, I came up with the following three criteria. Number one, mechanics. Does the game still feel good to play? Is it intuitive? Does it make me want to throw my controller through the screen and breathe in those sweet, sweet CRT fumes? Number two, presentation. Now, this doesn't mean graphics, mostly because how a game looks means literally zero to me. I grew up with a Wii. No, no, no. Presentation means the overall visual and audio experience that I get while playing it. And number three, is it? Well, that should clear everything up for you. So let's have a look at our candidates. One of the games I remember playing the most as a kid is, surprise, surprise, Super Mario Bros. This is one of the most influential games of all time, so you probably don't need me to tell you about it. So with that in mind, let me tell you about it. I haven't played this game in maybe 10 years, 
but I played the first few levels about a hundred times as a kid, so I don't think I'll have any trouble. It's like riding a bike, you never... It's, uh, it's like riding a bike, you never... Mm. You never forget. That being said, I am not the same boy I was when I first played this. Oh, you thought I forgot about Wonderling? I've been enlightened to the plight of the minions, so mark my words, there will not be a single drop of Goomba blood spilled in this episode. The Goombas are a brave, noble people, and I for one refuse to raise my boot against a creature so pure. Well, that guy probably deserved it. Despite playing this game about a billion times, I don't think I've ever actually beaten it. My brother and I would usually get about four, maybe five levels deep, and then get called upstairs to have some homemade calzones or something. But the game doesn't have any sort of save feature, so the next time we booted it up, we'd have to start all over again. For that reason, any level that we couldn't get to within the first 15-20 minutes, I don't got much to say about. But those first few levels, ho oh, oh, they are in my freaking blood. While 1-1 is easily the most iconic level in, well, any video game, my favorite was always its darker brother 1-2 because, well, you can straight up skip the whole thing just by running on top. Video games! Real talk though, figuring this out as a kid was freaking magical, and it got even better when the game actually rewarded you for your ingenuity and threw in the freaking warp zone at the end to let you skip to any world you want. Sayonara, World 2. I've got a date with Lakitu. Oh god, I've made a mistake. Take me back, take me back. Clearly, this game is crazy influential. But is it the best NES game in 2021? Oh, oh, oh you foolish, foolish, foolish ignoramus. This ain't even the best NES game with the word Mario in the title. That honor goes to Super Mario Bros. 3. My dad didn't actually have this one, or at the very least, he still didn't when we came around, but we still played it a whole bunch thanks to the late, great Wii Shop channel. May you rest in peace. In our many, many years as proud Wii owners, we somehow only managed to ever get five games off the Wii Shop channel, and that was My Pokemon Ranch, Pokemon Rumble, The Check Me Out channel, Chick Chick Boom, and Mario 3. What more could you need? Like the original, we never actually beat it, and in fact, we played Mario 3 way less than Mario 1 for some reason. We'd usually only play like two levels and then go play Mario Galaxy or Brawl or something. But after going back to it on the Switch, I am proud to say I was an idiot because this game is freaking great. Honestly, I was surprised to see just how similar this game was to even the modern 2D Mario games. You move around in overworld to select levels, it's got slopes, there are castles and mini bosses halfway through each level. Honestly, if it had 3D graphics, it could easily stand next to some of the games from the new series, and I don't think you'd be able to tell that it's over 20 years old. The platforming feels awesome. For an NES game, it actually looks phenomenal, and the whole thing is actually a stage play. I mean, without this game, what would all those terrible listicles about 10 video game theories that'll blow your mind talk about? The mechanics here are just mwah, the best. The sprite work actually still looks pretty freaking good today. And the athletics theme? Oh, mwah, mwah. I'm Italian, I'm allowed to do that. I was honestly blown away by just how well Mario 3 still holds up today. So, I'll put it at the forerunner for the coveted best NES game of 2021. But... Don't count your weird raccoon suit before they hatch, alright? We've still got a bunch of games to get through. Obviously, there's more to this console than everyone's favorite plumber, and no discussion about the NES will be complete without... Look, the cartridge is gold, so you know it's gotta be good. If Mario revolutionized the platforming genre, then The Legend of Zelda did the same thing for adventure games. And not only that, but this game was the first of its kind to include saving, which means you didn't have to restart every time you had to take a pee break or something, which is great because this game is long, confusing, and freaking hard. That being said, when me and my brother would play it as a kid, we'd usually play for maybe like 20 minutes, run around, get absolutely nothing done, and then when we came back the next time, we'd say, screw it, let's just start again. 
look, we were kind of dumb. Sometimes we'd watch our dad actually play the game for real, but aside from that, when it comes to knowing where to go and what to do in here, I got nothing. So when I booted this game up on my Switch, I did, well, exactly what I did as a kid. I grabbed the sword from this weird old man and took off in a random direction. And I must have been really, really bad at this as a kid because it literally took me less than a minute to find the first dungeon. <laughs> and they said this game was going to be hard. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, turns out the combat in this game is actually pretty tough. All you can do is stab your tiny sword out in front of you and hope that one of those freaking water turrets, I think they're Zoras, doesn't shoot you in the back over and over. Stop! Yeah, it's fair to say I died quite a bit in the 20 minutes or so that I played. Or did I ever die? Hmm? When Breath of the Wild came out, I heard a lot of people comparing it to Zelda 1, and after playing it again, yeah, I can see where they're coming from. Sure, it's a lot more limited in what you can do here, but the mentality of just sorta exploring until you find something? Oh yeah, that's this game's bread and butter. Even the dungeons, or excuse me, levels, are pretty open with plenty of secrets to find. Like this random old man just sorta chilling in this locked room. Eastmost Peninsula is the secret. Huh. Well that's not ominous at all. Uh, okay, uh, bye, I guess. I'm just gonna come over here and push this rock and go down here and... <gasps> the bow? In the first dungeon? Yeah! Alright, let me equip this bad boy right... Right now, how do I... How do I... Right now, just... Come on, yep, right over... Just... Right... <clears throat> what? Do I need arrows or something? <sighs> Fair enough, I guess. A few minutes later, I picked up a boomerang off the corpse of a moblin, so I'm okay. Alright, I've explored basically all of this place. Let's just grab the key and- Oh! Back! Back! Taste my mighty boomerang! Well, that was terrible. Let's just open this door- Oh my god, a dragon! Alright, green face. How do you like- this is the boomerangs. Cool. I mean, cool. good to know. Good this, to know. This. No, I mean, no crap, problem. Crap. Sword it is. This. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Mm. All right. New plan. Respawn at the start of the dungeon. Sprint through without getting hit so I can keep my sword beam and Dormammu have come to bargain myself. Take that, dragon butt. I won. And I did it all by myself. All right. That's probably a good place to stop. My assistant Richard has given me the sign that I spent too much time talking about this game already. But... I do hate Richard, so I'ma keep going. From there, the mighty hero wandered through innumerable lands. He slayed hordes of Octorok and tried to kill Azora. Got lost in a literal hedge maze for a bit. Not sure what that's doing in Hyrule. He came upon a canyon filled with the most annoying creatures imaginable and only got minorly frustrated in the process. He got very excited when he thought he discovered a secret with these peculiar rocks, but it turned out to be nothing. Surely, no man could survive all of these trials and tribulations, but Link is no ordinary man. Oh no, Link is a hero, blazing new trails and bravely going where no man has gone before. What? What? I'm back at the beginning? Alright, guess I'll go this way then. I gotta say, I knew this game was infamous for having strange old people just chilling in caves everywhere, but they are not messing around here. Meet the old man at the graves. Uh, okay. Uh, catch you later, I, uh, I guess. But the worst has got to be when you walk into a cave and just nothing. Hello? Hello, ma'am? Ma'am, are you, are you good? Are you dead? Yeah, it, yeah, she's dead. I'm getting out of here. Eventually, I came upon this infinitely looping hedge maze that I'm pretty sure is the predecessor to the Lost Woods. Now, I had this vague memory of looking up for my dad how to get through here on an early Yahoo or something, but ah, I just, if only I could just remember what the path was. North? West? South? West! Aha! Well... 
Good to know that little bit of information has been sticking around in my head for 15 years. The only thing I can't seem to remember, though, is... What's on the other side? Oh my god, centaurs with sword lasers! Oh, and that graveyard that old lady was talking about. Uh, hello, old man. One of the cave ladies was looking for you. Hello? Hello? Oh, look! I found him! So I'm fairly certain I'm not supposed to be here yet because it's filled with those horse guys that kill me in like two shots. But you think that's gonna stop me? I can semi-consistently make it to the fourth floor and enter the gungeon. I think I'll be fine. See? Completely fine. And look! Another dungeon! See, that wasn't so hard. Level 6? Uh, alright. Alright, I guess I could do a little sequence breaking action here. How hard could it be? Alright, at risk of this just turning into a full-on let's play, I'll stop there. So, is the original Legend of Zelda fun? Yeah, the mechanics are limited, but serviceable, and the soundtrack is just oh, gorgeous. But, does it still hold up today? <laughs> oh, no. Mario and Zelda are easily the most iconic games for this system, but if we want to find the best, we might have to dig a little deeper. So, with that in mind, let me paint you a picture. What if Godzilla and King Kong teamed up? Yeah, except they couldn't get the rights to either, so it's uh, George and Lizzie. Well, that's what you get with a Rampage. You play as either George or Lizzie, or if you have a friend, both. And as the name suggests, you destroy a whole bunch of property. And that's it. Each level has a couple of buildings that you can climb on and punch holes in until they collapse. There are these little dudes in trucks and helicopters who try to stop you to... Poor results, to say the least. The game is charming and fun enough at first, especially if you've got someone to play with. Other games of the time had co-op, but with something like Mario, you went one at a time. But in Rampage, two people can play the same level at the same time, and that was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the two-player mode because my brother was out of the house when I recorded, and I'd rather be pulled out of the side of a building like one of these poor schmucks than play with Richard, so just take my word for it, it was pretty cool. But is it cool enough to dethrone Mario 3 as the best NES game of 2021? Absolutely not! It's fun for like 10 minutes, maybe, but after that it is so boring. There's like nothing else you can do besides just climb the side of a building and mash the punch button until it falls down. Although I will say, the freeze frame at the end of each level almost makes the whole thing worth it. Almost. But apparently a lot of people do remember this game fondly because you're probably more familiar with the blockbuster movie based off of it starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. They made a movie out of this and they put The Rock in it. And you know what? I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's freaking great because I am convinced that that man can do no wrong. So you know what? For that reason alone, I'm glad this game exists. Like basically every game I've talked about so far, my brother and I never actually finished this one, mostly because even back then we got bored after like three levels and decided to go play Mario or something. And yet, we still played it a whole bunch for some reason. But I don't actually think it's that long, just going back and playing it now for like 10 minutes, I'm already on a screen with a map. I'm guessing I just destroyed the whole country and now it's going to show it on fire or something? Uh, oh, nope. Just beat California. One state. 49 to go. At this rate, it looks like Mario 3 is going to run away with this one, but there is still one game left on the docket here today. A game that I guarantee most of you know about without actually realizing it. Gyromite. I didn't even really remember this one until I saw the cartridge, but my brother and I definitely played it a bunch when we were kids. And you know what? Going back and playing it today, it's still pretty freaking great. It's a simple puzzle platformer that you can apparently play with Rob. You know, that guy from Smash Bros that you didn't know where he was from? I'm not really sure how Rob was supposed to work, my dad never had one, but you can play the game without him just fine. So, let's take a look.
In this game, you play as this random old man. In each level, you have to collect a bunch of sticks of dynamite while running away from those green dragons from Dig Dug. Yeah, I don't get it either. You can't jump, but you can climb on ropes to traverse up and down in levels, and there's bait scattered all around that you can use to distract the Dig Dug dragons. Seems pretty basic, but the true magic of the game comes in the form of the pillars. The blue and red ones can be raised and lowered independently with the A and B buttons, but there's a twist. Player 1 controls Oldie McGee, while Player 2 is the one who moves the pillars, which means you actually have to cooperate to figure out how to get through each level. Or, in my case, harness all my gamer skills and do it myself. Richard, if you say one word, I swear to god- This game absolutely rocks, and they actually push the pillar mechanic a lot further than I thought. Sometimes they're gates, other times they're elevators, and who could forget the best part of the game, smooshing those Dig Dug wannabes. Just make sure your friend doesn't accidentally smoosh you in the process. Since you're so restricted in your movement, you and your partner have to plan out how exactly you're going to get anywhere and avoid all the baddies. The game starts off pretty easy, but the levels actually get pretty complex and ask you to do some pretty crazy things. Like this one, where you have to leap off the pillar at the last second to nab this dynamite before... Well... And be careful, because if you lose all five of your lives, it's back to the beginning for you. Except for the fact that you can actually select what level you want to start on right from the title screen, which I legit never knew as a kid. But what do I look like to you? Some kind of cheater? It is wild how much better this game is than Rampage. They should make a movie about this thing. This summer, old man picks up sticks of dynamite in a, in a construction yard? Where is this thing? I don't know. Also, there's dragons. Starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Let's be real, you'd freaking watch that movie. I would. Nothing feels better than seeing your plan come to fruition. Like, watch this. I need to get up this rope, but this jabroni's in the way. But if I run up, drop the bait, and distract him, I can just run past it. Oh no. No, 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 no! There's also a mode designed for just one person where the guy automatically sleepwalks and you gotta open and close the pillars, but every time I tried to play it, the screen started flashing green. It was terrible, can't even show it, so just stick with what works. Because it freaking works! The mechanics are the epitome of simple, classic, and I defy you to look me in the eyes and tell me with a straight face that this game doesn't look leaps and bounds better than God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, you can't. But, is it better than Mario 3? Is Old Man Picks Up Explosives better than a game so good they haven't had to change its mechanics in 30 years? Yes, it's official, people. The best NES game of 2021. You know what? No, no, no. Game of the year 2021. Gyromite for the NES, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And I'm only like 50% joking here.